Hello, Good Professor. Good evening, Florida. Frank. Hi. Uh, a lot's been going on since we talked last, and uh, the, the 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 conflicts in um, in Yemen and Syria seem to be getting even worse, and uh, the the uh, relationship between uh, the U.S. and even other parts of the Western world and what's going on there is certainly um, not improving. And then uh, uh, the situation in Israel is getting worse between the Israel and the Palestinians. Um, then um, I just saw an, an announcement that the, there are 11 billion pieces of plastic in the, in the oceans that are destroying our um, ocean wildlife, especially the coral reefs. Right. But I think that the uh, what's been in the news in the past week that is most closely related to uh, the sorts of things we should be talking about that relate somehow to globalization. Um, well, I suppose waste is very important, but I'm not sure what we can say about that. But what I have on my mind is the flu epidemic, because it is, after all, the 100th anniversary of the worst flu epidemic in history. The Spanish and, uh, uh And the um, uh, one of the things that has come up uh, on and off for some time now is the problem of pandemics in globalization and the fact that it's extremely difficult to control them. And uh, this flu epidemic uh, is has taken people by surprise. The, uh, the, the, it's a type of flu which, for which the vaccine has never worked mm -hmm. as well. And um, uh, it's certainly not working as well this time. And uh, there's been a number of deaths. Uh, I forget now, there's twice as many deaths as last year. Oh, I think at least. Um, uh, and uh, so it really is um, a, something new and a big warning to us that, that uh, health is becoming more important in the world now than it was before simply because everything spreads so much more easily. And uh, if I understand correctly, the, um, the way that uh, influenza spreads uh, is much more difficult to control than most other infectious diseases because it just spreads through the air. Yes. Yep. Um, uh, so you don't have to actually be um, um, breathing in somebody's face for the, for them to catch it from you. It, it, uh, it, uh, I, I forget the terminology that's used, and it's not, not the sort of language that I'm accustomed to using, so I, I can't describe it properly. But, uh, but uh, it's... Cool. I think an airborne virus. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it's funny you mention that because um, the, the chief executive officer of Swiss Re, Swiss Reinsurance Company, the second largest reinsurer in the world, identified uh, the risk of pandemic as the single biggest risk facing the reinsurance industry. So um, it's really, it's, yes, it's on the minds of the, the people who insure risk because they do a lot of life reinsurance. Now, it, if you look around the world and uh, look to see what, it, to what extent people might be prepared for something, um, of course, in this country, we uh, have no uh, uh, health system. Um, well, Obamacare is a, was a great improvement on what was there before, um, but it's already been downgraded to some extent. And uh, uh, Europe does relatively well, even though they're having a great deal of trouble financing everything in Europe. Mm -hmm. And uh, then there are some other countries like Australia that don't do so badly. But um, uh, the, I think part of the problem is that the medical profession s sets its own prices. Oh. Uh, and and the, the insurance companies seem to agree. Yeah, or just let them do it. The, the only mitigating factor against that is the uh, United States government's uh, Medicare fee list, which uh, acts a little bit as a, as a bit of an anchor. But um, once you get off that, uh, you're exactly right. It's a free for all. Uh, and so, I mean, you think that, that 
the health industry should be treated in the same way it's a utility. Uh, it's something, it's like electricity. It's something we have to have. I or it should be thought of in that way. And, and it's not thought of in that way at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, the uh, people in the medical profession are some of the best paid people in the country and not only, especially in this country, but not only in this country. Uh, and I think that that needs to be rethought in some way. If, if there was uh, something that replicated the Spanish flu of 100 years ago that went through this country, I think the effects would be dire. They would be beyond description. And uh, it, it would be a national emergency of the, the worst possible kind. I don't know that the country would be equipped to deal with it. It would be, it would be like something out of a Stephen King novel. It would really be a, a terrible event. But I wonder what the reaction would be, uh, whether, it, whether it would lead to some sort of legislation that would um, um, make health care more easily accessible to people or not. Well, I think if we go back to that slight, slight outbreak of Ebola uh, two years ago in the United States, we saw a reaction of anger here that the government did not respond quickly enough. So there could be a, a quite a bit of outrage if something like like a giant pandemic occurred. But it's the the thing is that in this country it's not considered to be by most people the government's responsibility to do things like that. Um, and nevertheless, uh, Brian, whereas, if, if forty million people die, I mean it, it you know that and percentage wise i mean that that's about where we'd be now with the population increase over the past hundred years that that would that, that, might, would, that might. yeah yeah uh but it's interesting that uh uh the attitudes towards government and the responsibilities of governments is vary so much from one part of the world to another to another and it, it's interesting that in europe uh the there is a, a sense i think throughout western europe and, and well actually throughout europe um the, the uh post communist countries as well as the western as well as western europe there's a general sense that the government is responsible for everything mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and should provide safety nets for everybody mm -hmm. uh so it's it's strange in a way that that should have developed so well in europe and less well everywhere else um, except, uh, I suppose, I, I think Canada is probably fairly good, and Australia and New Zealand. But, uh, but I'm not sure about anywhere else. Um, I, I, so, um, go ahead. I, I wonder, you know, I, I was going to say, I was going to say uh, is there anything else like that? No, no. Is there anything else like that besides that? No, not uh, and uh, because the big the big problem with globalization generally, as we've said before, is that we have no organizational models for anything beyond the nation state that work. Um, I mean, we've got the World Health Organization, but do we? Is anybody going to rep depend upon them to to provide any real services? I mean, the, the United Nations generally has not uh, uh, become a model for providing services. And uh, the, what we need more than anything else is, is some way to uh, get um, organization on a level above the nation state. And at the moment, there's no sign of that happening. Well, it's a, it's a very it's a very sad commentary that that these conversations that we're having now, which I'm sure are echoed in in very responsible, powerful councils of the world, um, come back to the United States in the situation here, where we see no appetite whatsoever at the highest levels of government to even move in the direction of uh, international cooperation. In fact, it's just the opposite. Well, it's 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 a it's a culture, and it's interesting that to to see how the uh, the the uh, in Europe uh, because of what happened uh, in the 19th century and then into the early 
part of the 20th century that this the idea that the government should provide a safety net for everybody developed. And uh, I think the development of trade unions and things like that all has something to do with it. Um, whereas it was almost the opposite in this country. And I've never fully understood why that uh, was the case, but it is uh, an American cultural tenet really that um, the government should be a, should should not get too involved in too many things. Um, we, uh, we don't want a large government and a large bureaucracy that would take care of everything. People should the, the country should be uh, set up in such a way that everybody looks after themselves. Um, but uh, whether that is actually possible in a in a, a global population of 10 billion who are all interacting with each other, I don't know. It's well, going to be interesting to see. It, it's still the legacy of Thomas Jefferson and and the American frontier combined. I think that that contribute to that. But I think that that sense has been hijacked now by by people who simply want to keep their tax rates as low as possible and uh, maintain independence. So it's it's a again, but the one thing that could change that, you know, we're always looking at game changers here. And sometimes I refer to the, the giant meteorite coming at us. But a similar kind of meteorite would be an outbreak of a deadly influenza virus in the United States. That that would capture people's attention and perhaps begin to change minds. And the tax rates aren't that uh, low anyway. <laughs> no, no, they're not. Well, maybe maybe next week yeah. we can discuss the aftermath of President Trump's visit to the globalization meeting in uh, Davos. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, and probably the aftermath of a lot of other things that he's doing at the moment. <laughs> I, I, I noticed that he, he flatly told the Palestinians that uh, he wasn't going to bother to deal with them any longer unless they agreed to deal uh, and accept the Jerusalem capital. He was going to cut their money off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. City, city. You don't do what I tell you. Don't do what I tell you. I'm not giving you any money. It's it's a, it's as crass and direct a, a threat of blackmail as I've ever seen. Right, sitting yeah. there next to Netanyahu, who's smiling like the cat away the canary. <laughs> um, okay. All right, all right, Professor Spooner. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll talk next week. See you next. Bye. Yes. Uh, so. Um,